Hello everybody, uh, my name is Prana if you haven't been here before, and today I'm going to be introducing all of you guys to all of my animals. I have one, two, three, four, five, six that I'm going to be talking about today. That's not including the four chickens that I also have. They're going to be a different video, but today we're going to talk about the pets that are inside the house. So we're going to start off small. Mango and mulberry are mystery snails. I've had them since 2022, so they're named after their color. So mango is orange, mulberry is like a bluey purple color. I got them along with three chocolate shrimp, which I'll put a picture up if you guys don't know what those are. They're super, super tiny. Um, the snails ate them all within like three days. I learned that the hard way. They're too small, too edible. Don't do that. Two things that are very important about mystery snails that a lot of people don't realize is that the pH really messes with their shell and the shells grow with them. They add material onto the shells and continue to grow as they get older instead of, you know, coming out and getting a new shell like a hermit crab maybe. They also need calcium. I've had some problems lately with mango specifically. Her shell is starting to kind of crack. She's getting a little older, but it's starting to break a little too much. What I did originally was I baked some eggshells for a little bit just to get the bacteria off of them. And then I crushed them up in a food processor and just sprinkled them on top, but that didn't seem to do much. So I actually just got a cuddle bone shipped in the mail. It's a very easy, natural way for the animals to get calcium, but that should help a lot with her shell. I am acknowledging the fact that she is getting older and that may possibly be a reason why, but I want to help her as much as I can. So, cuddle bones in the mail. The pH of the water is supposed to be 7 for mystery snails. The cuddle bone also helps with that. For a fun fact about them, when I first got them, I got really, really nervous because I said, I don't know if this, these are male or female. I don't know if I have one male. I don't know if I have one female because if that happens, they can have babies. Uh, mystery snails are not hermaphrodites, meaning that they need both male and female to reproduce. So one day I woke up and there were eggs in my tank and I was like, oh no, that other one better not be a male because I'm gonna have hundreds and hundreds of snail babies that I don't want. The next day, the other one laid eggs. They're both female. So that's how I know that mango and mulberry are both girls is because I've seen both of them lay eggs and they need each other to reproduce. Number two, we are gonna talk about Nova, sweet little Nova. Yeah, I'm talking about you, mama. If you guys have not watched any of my videos before, you probably don't know who Nova is. If you have, you know who she is. She's in every single freaking video I ever do. She is my child. I have had her since I was 15. We got her in 2017. And she has been with me through high school, college, and now life, real life. But her backstory is kind of sad. I'm going to go over it really quickly. She lived with an older couple. I have no idea where. And a home health nurse came over to take care of one of them. The home health nurse saw her in the backyard, completely hairless, like maybe a couple weeks old. So she was a puppy. And the nurse was like, what are you guys going to do with her? Like, she needs to go to the vet. Like, is she okay? And they were like, we're probably just going to shoot her. Which honestly, when we get to another one of these stories afterwards, it doesn't seem as bad. Um, at least they were going to put her out quickly. But still, could have taken her to the shelter at least. So the home health nurse was like, no, 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 no. I'll take her to the shelter. I'll take her for you guys. So the home health nurse took her to the shelter. Because she looked so bad, a rescue ended up picking her up and they rehabbed her in a foster home. She had something called Demodex, which is like apparently one of the worst forms of mange that a dog can have. And her fur wasn't supposed to grow back, but all of it did. Yeah, she's a cute girl. Another really important thing about Nova, she is the reason that I got into farming, actually. Seeing how she was outside in nature, she loved the outdoors so much, which as any dog should, but just watching her run around and play in the creek and everything, that's what made me want land. And then I started thinking about land and I was like, ooh, maybe I can grow food and have animals too aka a farm. I have her to thank for that. I love her with all of my heart, obviously. If you guys have seen anything about her, you know that I love her. Uh, she actually has cancer right now. It's a uh, mast cell tumor skin cancer. Uh, she's had it before. She got it surgery for it in 2019. We got it removed and they said it would probably come back. Five years later, it has come back. Uh, luckily though, I started to go fund me and a lot of my friends and family and people I know donated and I've raised enough, enough money to get it covered. Thank goodness. So she's going to get surgery in three weeks. I will keep everybody updated on that, but she should be okay after that unless another one pops up. She's very lucky that everybody loves her. Okay, and then a fun fact about her is that if anybody commits domestic violence in front of her, she screams at the top of her lungs. Screams. At the top of her lungs. All right, next we have cute little Sora. 
I've had Sora since 2022 as well. I got her in, it is a summer, like July, I think. I just went to look at kittens. Uh, I went to the kitten room. I sat down. All of the kittens ran away from me except for her. She crawled onto my back. I'll put the video in. And she fell asleep. So I adopted her right then and there. And originally they said that they found her and her brother in a 55 gallon drum in the back of a building, just like this big alone about to die uh, and somebody brought them in so that's where she came from a couple weeks after i got her she started acting a little strange she was pooping a lot and not not making it to the litter box it was liquid it smelled really really bad uh i took her to the vet the vet told me that i was being ridiculous and that uh that's normal for kittens and i was like don't think so so luckily i took her to my sister who is a vet tech and my sister took her to her vet and they found out that she had FIP, but she had what's called wet FIP. There's wet and dry. I don't know anything about dry, but wet FIP, basically her body was, her like abdomen was filling with fluid and it was pushing around her intestines, which were giving her GI upsets. And if I had waited a lot longer or any longer really at all, the fluid would have moved into her lungs and she would have drowned. So luckily I found a group that was able to help me and I had to give her shots in the back of her neck for a month. And then two months after that, I had to give her capsules and it was awful. I, I had to send Nova to my dad's house because I had to re I literally had to keep her in my bathroom and rehab her for months. And then luckily it worked. She's completely fine now. No more stinky farts, no more stinky poop. Well, she's doing great. Uh, she still kicking it. She's a trooper. I'm super proud of her. I don't know anything about how the medicine will affect her long term, but that's the fun fact about her. She is tiny. Like, I wish I could show you her, her next to a normal sized cat. She's so small. She can't land on her feet. She can't jump. She has to crawl. So I don't know if like, because it happened so young, if it kind of like stunted her growth a little bit mentally and physically, like if she's just, her brain's just not fully developed. Oh, look, as I'm talking about her, hey, little girl. Ugh. Ugh. I wish you could tell how small she is. If you can't, you might be able to tell. He doesn't like being held. Next, we have Klaus, AKA Mr. Wiggles. That's what I call him because when he first sees you, he wiggles his butt so fast and so hard that if it, his tail hits you it's like you just got whipped it's awful klaus actually came from my sister but came from somewhere else before then so basically his previous owners had brought him in because he was sick turned out he had parvo the owners didn't want to pay for it so they had to sign a form to basically say that they're not going to treat him for it and that they know he's sick but they're leaving anyway and then i don't know how much longer after that i don't remember but they came back with him and said keep in mind he's a three-week-old puppy you know how big a three-week-old puppy is Tiny. They said that while they were out of the house, he knocked over a pot of boiling water and burned himself. There are many things wrong with that statement. One, why are you boiling water if you're not home? Hmm. How is a three-week-old puppy going to reach a pot on the stove? And why is his skin charred like charcoal from water burns? Hmm. So basically what they found out, none of that happened. Uh, they set him on fire because they didn't want to deal with the parvo and they were just going to try to kill him. They could have dropped him off somewhere. They could have surrendered him to an animal shelter. They could have done so many other things then set him on fire, but that's what they chose to do. They also broke his jaw. Don't know how, I don't know if it was a kick, but his tongue comes out the side of his mouth. They ended up agreeing to give him to one of the vet techs at the place that they took him originally. And then through her, my sister ended up getting him and rehabbing him. And then she had him for about a year until I convinced Donovan to adopt him in 2021. And now that I live here, he's also with me. He's a very sweet boy. He's a huge scaredy cat, which fair, right? I mean, fair. <laughs> Uh, luckily, just so you guys know, the people went to jail. They went to jail for about a day before they bailed out, but they still went to jail and faced charges for it. Fun fact about Klaus, uh, he loves to get zoomies by himself. If the fun fact wasn't that he's been set on fire before, then that, I'm sorry. Last but not least, we have Mr. Garbanzo Bean. I talked about him in my video back. Uh, he is a winter white dwarf hamster. Winter white dwarf hamsters, they live in the desert. So what a lot of people don't realize about winter whites is that they need sand they need to be able to bathe in sand to get rid of the extra oils and to keep themselves clean it's just a very natural behavior that they need to have it's just not very well known he has a little sand bath that he likes to roll around in it's super super cute he uses it all the time i love it the name winter white comes from they turn white in the winter as it gets colder they turn white kind of like a snowy hair or an arctic fox his story so i had already had a winter white dwarf hamster her name was astrid i got her in 2019 2020 something like that she passed away in 2022 as well my mom volunteers at the animal shelter a lot and she sent me a picture of him his name was twinkles and he was in a little princess cage she said that somebody had gifted him to a 12 year old girl for her birthday with everything with the food the bedding the wheel the cage literally everything and the next morning the mom surrendered him to the animal shelter who takes a hamster to an animal shelter she sent me a picture and she was like you already know how to take care of them you already have some of the stuff like i think you're the best place for him to go and i was like 
fine so now he's here that happened very recently maybe like a, two months ago a month ago something like that he has not been here very long he's what started my interest in rescuing animals i know it was like my mom's doing more so but being able to like save him from a, a possible bad situation or from an already bad situation a hamster does not belong in an animal shelter it's just not a good environment for them he didn't have a hut so of course i took him and now i'm just like so invested and passionate about saving animals he's the only one right now obviously because we're renting he is super super sweet he's very outgoing he's only bit me once and it was the day i got him and it was because i scared him fun fact about him he loves to run around the grass outside i have a little cage thing for him like a like a corral kind of and i'll let him run around i'll put the little toilet paper roll so he can go run through it um it's super cute he loves the ball as well one more thing about hamsters that people don't really think about they need something to chew on it needs to be you can get them something wood they need something to chew on because their teeth grow non-stop it means that the teeth can get stuck on things if they get too long it can go through the roof of their mouth it can go through the gums it can go through the lips so they need something to chew on all of the time to help curb that i have some apple sticks in there for him and also the hut that he has is wood so he can chew on that if he wants to hamsters are omnivores a lot of people don't think that they give them vegetables and fruits which is fine they can eat that as well but in the wild they also eat crickets mealworms things of that nature so i give him mealworms fairly often he loves them he loves them he freaks out if i don't hand it to him fast enough all right well thank you guys so much for watching if you made it to this point uh, i've been really excited to make this video because i love my animals so much and they mean the world to me so i'm excited to share their stories with you maybe help you guys get a little more excited about saving animals as well because there are a lot of animals and a lot of really bad situations that need help and we are the only people that can help them if you guys have any questions about my animals let me know i'm happy to answer them and also sundays keep keep an eye out on facebook and instagram i post animal facts on sundays about my pets and when i run out of pets i'll probably start doing animals that i see in nature as well and then another video next friday obviously like and subscribe turn the bell on for the next video because you're not going to want to miss it so yeah love you guys see you guys next week bye Mwah.